Hey everybody, welcome to the, the channel, Nigel's Mod the Bench. Um, Going to do a review for you today on a kit I bought yesterday at Telford. The It's from a company called Aviatic. Uh, I guess that's how you pronounce it, or Aviatic. I'm assuming it's Aviatic. They do World War One model kits and decals, as you can see, and they do some um, accessories as well, resin figures and stuff. Um, you can see here, I mean, this is a... This looks like to me a, a fully 3D printed World War One aircraft frame. Um, quite stunning. And you can see there their website. Go take a look. Uh, if nothing more than their decals, just go and look at what they do. It's um, it's quite astounding. The, the The stand was extremely busy, and to get to actually speak to them and buy something was um, was quite difficult because there were so many people who just wanted to look at everything they had. Uh, it seems that World War One aircraft at the moment are um, extremely popular. So this is what I bought. It's not an airplane. It's a truck, as you can see, or as they call it, a lorry. It's a World War I Marienfeld German lorry. And it's a 132nd scale, no, 132nd, not 35th, highly detailed multimedia kit. And it says down here, limited edition. It appears that pretty much everything this company does is limited edition. So they kind of make whatever they plan to make. When they run out, that's it. When they're gone, they're gone. I bought this because he had it made up there. And when you actually look at its um, its shape, to me it kind of almost looks like a like a kind of folly vehicle, um, something you might see in a coffee shop on the top of a fireplace. Um, you know, not real, but it it is. It's actually genuinely exists. And if you look up online, you will find uh, images of this. There's one particular black and white image that springs to mind, where it's um, it's got the tail end of an albatross sat in its back here. Uh, tied on with rope, cut the guys sat in there and they're driving off down the road with an al albatross just no wings on it, just the uh, fuselage engine and undercarriage and uh, yeah, so driving off down the road towing this albatross behind it quite why you tow a plane down the road, I don't know um, I thought it would be better to fly it but uh, I don't know, maybe they were taking it to a, a remote workshop somewhere but anyway, um, yeah, it's real, it exists and it's beautiful I haven't looked inside this box other than um, when I was at the stand the guy showed me something I can't remember what he was going to show me now I think he was going to show me the photo etch but we didn't actually get to look at it anyway he was so busy um, so yeah looking around the box you can see here is the uh, the model in um, side view that's what it looks like and then there's your health warning there that you shouldn't eat it or anything and please read the instructions okay um, as with all the kits I saw there they have this kind of this lovely sort of plaque on the end so you can see this is uh, kit 008 World War One Marienfeld lorry and then we've got some words here about um, visiting their website and all the stuff they've done and then here's some other items they do there's a German um, fuel cart and a German large fuel cart so uh, yeah I think I should be getting on their website and getting those because um, they do look very, very nice. I do warn you, if you go to the Aviatic website, if you're an enthusiast of anything World War I, um, make sure you haven't got your credit card with you, because you will spend lots of money, um, which I'm sure these guys will love, but uh, you um, you won't. <laughs> and having had a look at the website this morning, something I must tell you, they have a note on the covering home sheet, home page, that they are going to be increasing all their prices by 20% as of the 1st of January 2019. So, you know, 20%, these kits aren't cheap. It's uh, it's worth um, it's worth getting it now. I mean, th this kit here is £110 on their website. So 20% on that, that's going to make it £132. So, um, yeah, get on there now and, and do your buy-in. So here we go, box turned around sideways, dark with the lights, trying to get rid of as much reflection as I can. So um, here we go, let's have a look inside the box. So we've got a full size instruction manual there, blimey, it's a proper book. Um, let's get this box out of the way and we'll have a look at, um, we'll have a look at what the instructions offer us. So we've got here the uh, description of what the model is. And then when we turn the page, we've got some historical information here on the actual uh, truck itself. 
sorry, lorry, <laughs> and some technical stuff here. So if you want to pause and have a read, it tells you down here maximum speed in 4 to 16 kilometres an hour. It's probably, what, 10 miles an hour? Just the sort of thing you get stuck behind after a vintage rally, isn't it? Um, so we've got all the resin parts here and metallic resin parts, whatever that may mean. Uh, it's telling me here that it's not suitable for children under 14. And um, Oh yeah, resin dust is dangerous when inhaled. Guys, if you do build one of these kits or any resin kit, the dust that comes off a of resin is lethal. So wear a protective mask. Um, and it needs to be a mask for dust, not just vapors. So um, yeah, I think the vapor ones are actually better. I think vapor's PP3, but you need at least a PP2 for working with resin. Um, so yeah, we've got some PE there. We've got some acetate parts for the windows, decals. We've got some brass rod tubing, copper wire, some more tubing, miniature chain, copper foil. Um, all the symbols here. So uh, yeah, it's all um, it's all there. It's very really, um, the quality is very much like Wingnut Wings. I don't know if the uh, actual instructions themselves will be, and then. Yeah, kit includes all parts of decals to build one project. While I was on the stand, there was a guy there talking to me, comparing these kits with Wingnut Wings. And he said, you know, Wingnut Wings are very, very complete and you can buy some aftermarket for them. Which, if you look at my HGW reviews, other than the seat belts, I'm not really sure you need it. Um, but, uh, yeah, what he was saying with these, with these kits, the aircraft kits, you get everything. Absolutely everything. Turnbuckles, the lot. Uh, the only thing you don't get is your rigging line. So um, that's with the aircraft kits. I assume this is going to be very similar. So we're starting off with the cab. Um, and straight away we're starting to drill. This obviously is, this kit is for the experienced modeler. It's obviously, well, at this price it wouldn't be a starter kit, I guess. But um, yeah, it's giving you all your paint callouts here, which is nice. Um... <laughs> A little PVA or epoxy glue could be used to form a knob here. It's going to be full of these little suggestions going through. It's a proper little, uh, you know, a proper small modelling company that is full of modellers making models for modellers. And it's, it's just going to be uh, a dream to work with, I should imagine. Um, they tell you to drill a 1mm hole. You use some supplied diameter brass rod. 1mm diameter brass rod, sorry. Then you've got your pedals. Um... The pedal arrangement was not standardised. The gas pedal was likely in the middle. My God. <laughs> Imagine jumping in one of those now. You'd uh, you'd scare yourself, wouldn't you? And then you've got your, your clear parts here. it uh, be interesting to see if that acetate is, is pre-punched. It looks like it might be. We'll see when we get there. Um, then we've got the, uh, the bulkhead there, the seat. You drill in more holes for the um, brake and gear shifts. Then we've got the uh, grill going on here, the nice Daimler badge on the, the resin front. What have we got over here? There's a real picture there, very, very much like Wingnut Wings. There's a picture of a real aircraft. A real aircraft? Real aircraft here. A real truck out on the airfield. I wonder if this is the same truck here with uh, the hoops on. And then we've got the front axle assembly. Again, you're doing more drilling. Then you fit in the front springs, front axle. Rear axle and the um, and the A-frame. More photographs, very nice. Um, then we're fitting the cab floor to the chassis, bulkhead and the sides. Then we've got the front and the firewall going on. And we've got a um, a ratter here. Obviously, yeah, here they're showing you the back goes onto the sides. In actual reality, the sides come to the side of the back like this rather than like that so you can see the difference there that versus that so that's pretty cool uh, assembling the cargo bay the cargo bed or cargo box they're calling it then we're going to add the wheels headlights with clear lenses side lanterns which they would have had I wonder if they'd have had a They've been full of gas or fuel if you, or if they were actually plumbed into the vehicle. Interesting to find out. Headlamp mounts. Um, and then we're onto the front fenders. 
and it looks like they're photo etcher we're forming in from PE and then we've got some um, some later trucks here by the look of it or variants of this truck yeah it looks like it's all variants of this truck perhaps all the different types that's a weird looking thing those trailers are they motorized trailers I don't know um, and then going here we've got the exhaust uh, yeah, you actually make the exhaust out of aluminium tubing by the look of it. <laughs> yeah, you actually have to bend the uh, aluminium tubing to make your own exhaust. You can't get much more realistic than that, can you? And then we've got a nice horn going on the side there. A rolled up uh, canvas sheet. And then fitted the exhaust. What's this fitting? They're called sprags. Hmm. I don't know what sprags are they may be some sort of claw that goes into the ground for winching I don't know and then we've got a painting and decaling guide so uh, yeah it's all just pretty much grey um, what they're telling you to paint the XF71 for the grain green that's co that's a um, Tamiya cockpit green and again just like wingnut wings they're giving you Tamiya and Humbrol colours which is nice they haven't been bought out by the likes of AK or MIG Ammo, which um, their paints are not. Although saying that AK real colour is lovely, but the rest of it I wouldn't give you tokens for. That's just my opinion. And then more pictures here. There's a photograph there. And it's got the aircraft actually sat in the back of it. Look at <laughs> It's quite incredible. And then we've got some pictures here of aircraft coming soon from their range. Um, yeah, say so go look at their website. Hints and tips, latest releases, news, and look at their whole range. And there's a little message there from the uh, from the uh, Richard Andrews, the director of Aviatic. So he's saying there, thank you very much for buying the kit. There we go. So that's the instructions. Let's have a look at what's inside the box. Okay, so move the camera in a bit more, get a bit closer. These, uh, this is a photo edge, obviously. This photo actually comes in the instructions for um, for protection, but what you've just seen, my review of the instructions was about my fourth take. I got about sort of two or three pages in and realised I was waffling every time, so... Yeah, sorry about the waffling. Um, <clears throat> here we can see um, it's quite thin. It's uh, beautifully etched, perfectly sharp and everything, really, really crisp. Glad to see that it's not plated, plated or anything, like the old Eddard stuff used to be. So, um, yeah, beautifully printed, fairly simple, good, um, good little photo etch sheet there. I don't know why that says 2015. This kit was actually limited release and not available till this month. So I don't really know what's going on there. Unless they made another version of it before. Strange. Okay. Um... So let's have a look what's under here. This is the first time I've looked in here. Oh, hello. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming that's a figure. Yeah, they've got this uh, warning on here about um, about not sanding resin or cutting resin without a mask. And uh, they're telling you to um, wash the parts in mild detergent. It's always a good idea. I mean, I'd, I'd even do it with plastic kits these days because a lot of the uh, Chinese... Chinese kits, which most of Marty's days, they come in with a, a very thin film of oil. And it, it's better just wash them rather than wait and find out um, once you paint them. Um, so yeah, we've got this resin figure here. Let's have a look. It's another little bag inside the bag. Um, there's a guy there stood next to the truck. Good look at things. Um, so let's get these. I'm going to end up with a pile of resin on my bench. It's all going to have to be backed up. Come on, right. So here we can see the. Oh yeah, that's very nice. And um, yes, yeah, so he's obviously sitting inside the truck. It looks like he's leaning out, looking out the window. So um, I did see one of these kits that had a dog sat in the passenger seat, and I would like to have had the dog. Maybe have the attic do with the dog. So here are some more resin components. So 
So let's get these are the these are what they said was metallic resin. Oops, there's a resin part there. In fact, I think what I'll do is I'll stop this video here, move the box out of the way and do a proper review with the stuff on the bench. Right, so that's better. Now we can uh, see what we're doing. So these are the, so say, metallic resin parts. And I'm assuming they've got a metal powder in with the casting resin. So um, they'll be a little bit stronger and more stable, I guess. That's just a guess. I'll have to um, look it up. But uh, yeah, nice detail on the springs. Looks as though it needs a bit of a clean up there on the side. Oh no, it's just a bit of flash, that's all. Just rubs off with your finger. So yeah, perfect. Um, blimey, these are so much nicer than plastic springs you get in um, injection moldy kits. I, you know, they generally either come as a single solid part or a bloody weight sink mark in them, don't they? Or they come as two halves. And then you've got a seam line to seal to do with deal with in the middle. And even if they are one piece, you still get that seam line, which is always a, a pain. But uh, yeah, very nice. So let's put those to one side. And we've got this baggie here, which looks like it's got all my axles and stuff in it. Again, remember, as everyone says, when you empty these bags, if you get tiny little bits of flash, put it back in the bag. You'd never know. Um, like stuff like this is obviously molding flash. You can just wipe that away. But sometimes you'll see a tiny little bit. You think, oh, it's just a piece of a piece of waste in it. Then you find it's, you know, it's part of the trigger of a gun or something like that. Um, now that is beautifully cast. That is the transmission with the um, yeah, that's the transmission with the uh, brake and everything all and the bright drive shaft all molded into one. That's um that's lovely, really nice. So we've got the front axle there. Nice um, if you decide to paint this before assembly, that's a nice way of holding it. That extension there on the poor plug. Hoop, I'm assuming that may be something to do with the radiator. I'm assuming, or part, it's obviously part of the chassis. Um, these are those sprags by the look of it. Uh, yeah, there's another one there. Exhaust parts, or air tank and exhaust part perhaps. Which are lovely. And then we've got some, oh that side horn is very nice. The air horn, that's lovely. Um, steering rod, steering wheel, and we've got the, um, the gas lamps there on the sides, pedals, they're lovely as well. All very, very cleanly moulded, that's headlights, look at those. The detail on the back is astounding. They're beautiful. This really does build into a beautiful model. I saw he had a couple on display on the stand and um, yeah, very, very nice indeed. Let's pull that back together there. I can always bag this up afterwards. And we've got another bag here. Let's not do that one yet. Let's do this one. Wheels and tyres. So let's have a look at this. Oh, the rear double wheels are moulded as one. So it's a double tyre with one wheel. And uh, yeah, beautiful. And please don't anybody ask why didn't they put an air valve on there. So uh, yeah, there's a couple of stubs there to clean off but um you know we're modelers and there's some tiny bits of flash on the inside which will basically probably blow off an airbrush and then there's a front wheel there a lovely nut detail on the outside of it really really nice some boxes here toolboxes there's three of those very very crisp fine detail and some wood grain on them as well you know how much i love doing my wood graining so i'll be going to town on this and i will be building this kit um, and these discs here, that's a concern. I'm assuming these are some sort of disc that goes behind the wheel, some sort of brake perhaps, and I've only got three of them. Um, I'll have to have a look at them in a minute, maybe I should have four. Let's have a quick look now. Seventeen. Oh no, I should only have two. I've got three, so bonus. I thought I was one short. I'm, I'm on too many, so that's good news. So if anybody gets this kit and they're one short, let me know rather than bother Richard with it. 
So there's uh, so there's that. Oh, blimey, it's just started absolutely pouring down. And then here's the last bag of resin parts. And we've got some bodywork here. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be that shape. Yeah, it is. I'm, I'm, I was wondering if it was bent or if it was supposed to be that shape. Fuel filler there by the look of it. And uh, yeah, lovely. Very, very nice. All beautifully cast, no air bubbles. Looks like nothing's twisted or deformed. I mean, the. Uh, it's just, um, it's perfect. It's, uh, yeah, it's perfect. So obviously the, uh, the resin grill goes in there. There's the Mercedes badge on the front, which obviously became, which obviously was Daimler. Whoops. Chuck it on the floor. And, uh, yeah, it's a good solid, solid piece of resin, that. And then the floor. Oh, lovely wood grain detail on that. I'm going to have some fun with this. Yeah, I do love my wood grain. And then um, no wood grain planking detail underneath. So I'll have to add that because I'm sad that. Uh, but we've got the we have got the brake pedal and pedal um, mechanism there, obviously, on the on the pivot. There probably would be some levers as well going to rods at the back, but uh, none of that would be seen. So. Looks like there's a small imperfection in the resin. Oh no, it's not a perfection, it's a slot. It's a hole for something to mount to. So uh, I thought I'd found a fault, but oh no, no. Oh, look at that seat. Very, very nice. <laughs> you know, I like to mess up my seats as well a bit, and this one's um, already done for me. So I guess the figure will, will sit in. I can't put him in there because he's got a big lump on his bum. But um, yeah, the figure will sit in there. It looks like the seat has been designed for him to sit in. So if you don't want to put the figure in, I guess you just have to put some filler in there and blend it out a bit. But, uh, you know, that's that's no mean feat, really. So, yeah, very, all very nice. All very beautifully cast. Nice wood grain on the front and the back. Looks like that might need a bit of a, a pull back, but hey. Very interesting. It's got this, um, this section out here, like, a, like an I-beam. And the outside, I wonder if that's um, to aid assembly or if that's actually the way it is. No, it's there to aid assembly. Look, wow, they got a groove in the bulkhead and a, and a tab on there that goes into that groove. Wow, I am impressed, very impressed. This is beautiful, it's absolutely beautiful bag of parts here we've got the aluminium tube for the exhaust some, some small brass tubing some rods some more tubing there or some bar and then uh, some chain I won't bother getting this out of the bag and a thin piece of copper sheet for something or other which is nice now then here's this box so what's in here more bubble wrap for the packaging and that is incredible. Just look at the way that is packed. You can see in here, I'm not going to untape all this stuff. Well, that's obviously the bulkhead with the, the windscreen frames. We've got the chassis there and it looks to be perfectly straight. Um, it certainly does look to be perfectly straight. We've got the cargo bed side walls there, which are absolutely beautiful. The cargo floor. I want to see the wood grain on the other side. So yeah, we look at the detail on that axle. It's absolutely gorgeous. The wood grain on there. And I want to see the other side of this cargo bed. It's very sticky tape. Yeah, it's got some mold release on there. Um, the Aviatic logo there, which is nice, uh, and the wood grain on there is lovely. Um, it looks like they do the same as me with the saw and, um, to put the grain in. But that would be lovely. I'll have to, I'll go to town on that. As you all know, I do love my wood grain in. Um, and that's that. Now I'm hoping to lift this out. And no. What I was hoping to find, which I think I've got missing in this kit, is a sheet of acetate. 
um, unless it's in here. No. So it looks as if my clear windows in this kit are missing. So I'll have to get onto Aviatic and see. Unless they're taped to the inside or they're in with the PE. They're not in with the PE. They're not taped to the inside of the box. I don't think they are. I'll have to have a look myself. But um, I'll get onto them and I'm sure he'll be uh, only too willing to send me that. We didn't look at the decals, did we? Here we go. Here's the decals. And uh, yeah, lovely. Very, very thin. Um, it looks like they may need to be cut out individually yourself. It looks like they may not have separate, you know, like um, like the old, remember the old decals used to get many years ago where the whole sheet was just one, if you put it in water, the whole sheet came off together as well. I think that's what this is like, but I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to look in the instructions. It may be that these are those, um, these are the type, like the, uh, Oh, what they call the HGW ones that you put on and then you um, rub the film off after. So, yeah, there we go. So that was the Aviatic World War I Marienfeld and Dürerman lorry. And it's a 132nd scale, highly detailed multimedia kit and it's a limited edition. And as of today, it's £110. Um, yes, it's not cheap, but it is limited edition and it is absolutely gorgeous. I've only ever built a couple of resin, well I've never actually built a full resin kit, um, but I've used a lot of resin cockpits and stuff in aircraft. And this is some of the nicest presentation, packaging, you know, the thoughtfulness that's gone into the assembly. It just looks stunning and uh, I think it's probably the nicest I've ever seen. So I think it's well worth the money um, and bear in mind if you um wait until that wait until after the first of january 2019 prices are going up 20 percent. so best get your orders in now okay so uh thanks for looking i hope you've enjoyed this um if you have please subscribe and um look out for more videos like this i'll be putting a lot of wing that wings up wing stuff up very soon um i've just bought another couple of kits so i now own 14 i think so uh i'll speak to you all soon and thanks for watching Bye bye